My dad used to say that he could see faces in the floor tiles. The ones in the bathroom, specifically. I laughed and told him that's a normal thing. It's called pareidolia. The tendency to see a pattern where there is none. Like seeing a cloud and thinking it looks like a turtle. People see faces in inanimate objects all the time. Within wood grains and ink blots, tea leaves and spilled paint, we see something where there is nothing. The Blessed Virgin in a grilled cheese. Jesus in a water stain under the sink. St. Peter in a quesadilla. I laughed, but after my dad passed away, I started seeing them too. On the floor tiles, not in quesadillas. They look angry, he had told me, and they're leaving messages now. I don't think this is pareidolia. That had really scared me for some reason. My dad was a smart guy. He already knew what pareidolia was, even if I thought I was teaching him something new. Like how when we watched Jeopardy, he already knew all the answers, even if I was the only one who said them out loud occasionally. So when I started noticing the faces in the floor tiles after his death, I took note. I began to draw them. To write down the messages they were sending, as I tried to decipher their hidden meanings. I tried my best not to become as obsessed with them as he had before he died. Before he drowned. The faces in the floor tiles didn't look angry to me. They looked happy. Pleased with themselves. I thought it was fun at first, seeing the faces and reading the secret messages they left for me. Deciphering them. Not just in the floor tiles, but increasingly in more and more places. The floor tiles told me to look out for the bike messenger. And on my walk into work, I saw him coming and stopped in my tracks. If I'd continued on, I would have been splashed a second later by the big puddle he veered into accidentally. I would have ended up covered in mud and my day would have been ruined. I grinned and walked into work, knowing I had a special line to some power that had a few tricks up its sleeve. This had clearly just been a way to prove its abilities, and I wondered what would be next. The messages came again soon after, hidden in the patterns of the marble countertop in the kitchen at work. While stirring the cream into my coffee, I stared at it and tried to make it out. Just as I deciphered the message, someone said, hey, You alright there, George? It was my boss. He was staring at me while I mindlessly stirred my coffee, just as I had been doing for five minutes. I had also been speaking silently under my breath as I tried to make out the words in the hidden message in the marble countertop. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, just lost in thought. What's up? He shook his head and went over to the fridge to get another energy drink. As he walked past me on his way back to the office, he muttered under his breath. Really know how to pick him, don't you, Craig? I'm pretty sure he's going to fire me soon. Anyways, that message told me what to do next. There were online forums, it said. Places where I could learn more. Places where I could find a community among the others who were able to see the messages. The faces. On the dark web, I found the hidden community, and used the password given to me by the messengers in the marble slab. Further proof of the fact that this was all real, the password worked. They permitted me to become a member of their organization, the Paradoliacs. The secretive community had only one purpose, to follow the directions set forth by the messengers and fulfill their commands. I became a valued member of the organization, after I revealed that I had a talent for drawing the hidden faces and decoding their messages. Not everyone was capable of that. Most had to simply remember things as best they could, since the faces never showed up in photographs. Soon I was spending all of my time with the other members of the group online, decoding secret messages. My family wanted to know about my interests, so I told them about our group. They told me I was losing it, and that I needed to get help. It didn't matter how much I tried to convince them. They told me it was nothing more than pareidolia, finding patterns where there were none. 
my mom booked me a session with a psychotherapist. Just for a chat. She said I was taking my father's death too hard, and that my obsession with the faces was a delusion brought on by PTSD, perhaps. Because of what I had witnessed that day at the pier. I told her she was wrong. I knew for a fact that she was wrong. She said I sounded just like my father. The next time I saw the faces in the patterned ceiling of the subway car, I noticed that they looked angry. They told me to go to the pier, to the same dock where it had happened, to where he died. And so I did. Looking down into the inky black water from the rickety wooden dock above, I watched as the light shimmered and reflected off the surface of the lake, making patterns where there were none. Messages and faces. Familiar faces. Sorely missed. And gone too soon. Join him. My foot stepped over the edge. I was about to lean over and plunge myself into the cold, brackish waters below. When I saw the face appear beside the words. No longer angry. But not smiling, either. It looked hungry. I took a step back and it scowled. Shaking my head, I tried to clear my thoughts and remember why I was even here. Why was I doing this? The shimmering reflection of the moon on the water below told me not to worry. Not to fret. Just to give in. And before I knew it, I was falling. Ice-cold water shocked me and I felt myself incapable of movement as my mind blanked completely unable to register the gravity of the situation I had just found myself in. I realized immediately I didn't want this. Whatever force had brought me here, it was the same one that had killed my father. It had been deceiving me all this time, reeling me in with the secret messages hidden in the tiles and woodwork, in the marble countertops and patterned ceilings. The force of it pulled me down, grabbed me by the ankles and took me under the surface, gulping down water instead of air and feeling immediately out of breath. My legs began to kick, and I started trying to swim up towards the surface in the ice-cold water. I managed to come up for air and coughed up a lungful of water and took a great gasping breath of air, looking around with panicky wide eyes. There was no one around this late at night, and the waves were high, and a large one was just now about to break and crash down upon me. I held my breath and braced for the impact. The wall of water crashed into me and I felt my nose bloodied from the sudden hit. Water went up it as well into my sinuses and airways, and I found myself plunged below and unable to expel it. I sank down and down, feeling heavy with the weight of my clothes, disoriented from the force of impact from the wave. The water was reflecting in odd patterns, making it appear that up was down and down was up. Running out of breath, I struggled to find my way back up to the surface, but could not decide which way to go. I picked the direction that felt right and kicked as hard as I could, to try to get back to the air on the surface. I was terrified I would die, but at the same time I was furious, for I knew now that the entity that had killed my father was attempting to do the same to me. Only now that I was about to die in the same watery grave where his body had been lost and never found, did I realize how foolish I had been? I cursed myself remembering how I had sided with the people from the message boards, instead of my own mother. And I wished I had believed her when she said the pareidoliacs were nothing but trouble. That was when I saw the rope ladder suddenly appear beside me. I looked up and saw my mother standing on the pier, a worried look on her face. She was screaming at me and pointing at the rope ladder, as I thrashed and struggled in the icy water. Grabbing onto the first rung I could get my hands on, I began to climb. Once I got out of the water, she confessed to me that she had been worried that I was starting to follow in my father's footsteps. That maybe the secret messages and hidden codes had brought me to the very place that had taken his life. She had brought the rope ladder from my childhood treehouse, thinking she might need it for some reason. A little voice inside her head had said to bring it along. 
and she had listened. Become a channel member today for early access, bonus videos, and special emojis only available to members. Check out the description below or click the join button for more info. If you'd like another way to help support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jordan Group Horror. As a patron, you'll get access to bonus videos and content, you'll be credited at the end of every video going forward, and if you decide to stay for three months, I'll name a character after you which will be featured in a Hollow's End story. Links to join the Patreon are in the description. Thanks everyone for listening, please like, subscribe, and comment to help the channel continue to grow, and see you again next time at 4pm Eastern Standard Time. Hope you have a great night.